Hello everyone, Michael from Anomalous here, and I'm going to show you how to build our Ostera Boost Pedal Point-to-Point -point Kit. This kit uh, I consider to be kind of advanced. Um, it's for people who are accustomed to soldering and maybe have built a few pedal kits before. A point-to-point -point pedal is... Um, not the easiest thing to do, but I'm going to try to walk you through it as best as I can. We're going to start with a circuit analysis. If you're not interested in that, you can skip ahead to the other parts. But here I'm going to walk you through all of the parts of the circuit and what each component does. We're going to talk about the components that are included in the kit, the tools that you're going to need, and we are going to prepare the enclosure that is um, screwing on the foot switch and the LED and things like that onto the enclosure and then we're going to solder and wire up the bypass and LED circuit and then finally the effect circuit this is the circuit for the Ostera boost and I think it's important to understand the circuit when doing a point-to-point -point pedal just because of the complexity of it, you should understand where everything goes and what everything is doing. So let's start with the bypass circuit. This here is the 3PDT foot switch. Your guitar signal comes in through here in jack. The pedal is in bypass mode, so we have a jumper wire that goes across here and straight into the output. And we can see here that we have a 9 volt DC input. This node here is the same as this, if they're named the same. So we have 9 volts coming through here into R6, that's our LED resistor, and then into our LED. As you can see, our LED is not connected to ground, so it's not turned on. If we turn the foot switch on, our guitar signal, which comes in through in jack, it will be connected to this input node. Through here, our signal is affected by the effect circuit that's up here, before eventually making its way to the output node, and then back to the foot switch, which then connects to the output jack. There are lots of different ways to do a bypass circuit with a 3PDT. This is my favorite because the output here in bypass mode, this is the effects output. If there's any noise at all within this circuit, it's going to go to ground. So this style of true bypass is really, really quiet. Let's move on to the power supply section. So there's only one component here and that's D1, a diode. And as you can see, it's facing the wrong way. And the reason for that is because, as you may or may not know, guitar pedals have kind of a weird power supply trend, which is that they are center negative. What that means is that the pin on the DC power jack is negative and the sleeve is positive 9 volts. This is opposite to what you would expect and the reason why it's like this is because Boss decided to do it this way. We don't exactly know why but it's just how things are now. So you have to plug in the correct DC power adapter. If you connect the wrong one and you don't have D1 here it could damage components. It could damage the LED because an LED is polarized, meaning it has to go in a, a certain direction. It can't go in the opposite direction. It would, it would blow up if you connected the wrong sort of power adapter. Same thing here with C2. You are sending 9 volts into the wrong direction of a polarized electrolytic capacitor 
and it could literally blow up. And it can also damage the transistor. However, with D1 here, since it's facing the wrong way, if we plug in a power adapter that is center positive and the, the ring is negative or ground, then the positive 9 voltage is going to go through D1 and then out to ground and it's going to protect all of our sensitive components within our circuit. Let's talk about the effect circuit now. This is the input, so when our pedal is turned on, our guitar signal goes into this input here. And our first component is a 1 meg resistor, R1. And this resistor can be found on every guitar pedal circuit. And the reason for it is to silence the circuit when you press the foot switch. So it's a very large resistor, which is not going to affect our guitar signal very much. It's just going to bring down a little bit of the signal to ground. So it's going to be slightly quieter, but because the resistor is so big, it's not going to affect it that much. Here we have our potentiometer. In this configuration, we are attenuating our guitar signal before it is boosted. So that way we can adjust the amount that we are saturating this transistor. A lot of times you'll see this potentiometer on the output here, kind of like this. And in this configuration, we would be boosting our guitar signal, saturating the transistor, and simply attenuating the output. So C1 here is a ceramic capacitor. Capacitors, like all components in a pedal circuit, do different things depending on how they're used in a circuit. So one of the uses for a capacitor is that they block DC voltage while allowing AC voltage through. We have both DC voltage and AC voltage in a circuit like this. DC voltage would be the 9 volts here, and AC voltage is going to be like our guitar signal. And here through R2, we are sending 9 volts DC into this node. And we don't want to be sending that 9 volt DC back into the input, which would then go into our guitar pickups. So we add a capacitor here that's sufficiently large enough not to affect the tone to block the, the DC voltage. This is called a coupling capacitor. R2, R3, R4, and R5 are all used to bias the transistor here. So they're just set values. C2 is a electrolytic capacitor that's quite large and its purpose is to bypass R5, that's the emitter resistor, and what this does is it increases the gain of the transistor by a lot. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so without C2, we are still boosting the circuit. As you can see, I've probed the input, so this is our raw guitar signal, that's the blue line here, and I've probed the output as well, which is the red line. And it's being boosted by quite a lot, maybe three times. But if we add C2, it's going to jump up a lot. So we're boosting this signal probably like a hundred times. Okay, next is our transistor, which is pretty self-explanatory. The center pin is called the base. The top pin is called the collector. And the bottom pin is called the emitter. When you look at a transistor face on, uh, the base will be in the middle, the emitter will be on the left, and the collector will be on the right. Out of the collector, we're taking a signal, and again, we have a coupling capacitor here. This is the exact same as C1, and it's blocking the 9 volts that is coming through R4 so that we're not sending DC voltage to the output. Okay, I hope that cleared up some of the questions you might have when it comes to guitar pedal circuits, uh, what each component does, and hopefully this will also help you while building the circuit in point-to-point -point style.
The components in the kit are a electrolytic capacitor, a diode, six resistors, potentiometer, input and output jack, the transistor, two ceramic capacitors, the 3PD T-foot switch, LED and bezel, and the 9 volt power jack, and of course the enclosure and knob. The tools you'll need will be a soldering iron, helping hands, solder, a pair of needle nose pliers and wire clippers, A socket set, I'll show you which sockets we'll use. A Phillips head 2 screwdriver. And lastly, a small flathead screwdriver for putting the knob on. The sockets you'll use are going to be 10 millimeters, 3 eighths of an inch, half an inch, and 9 sixteenths of an inch. Now we're going to attach all the components that will be uh, bolted onto the enclosure. Take the LED and rip it out of the bezel and then remove the nut and washer. Place the bezel in the center hole on the front. Hold it there with your finger and then put the washer on and nut. Okay, and now use a 10 millimeter socket to tighten it down and your left hand here holding the bezel from the front is uh, providing the counter pressure. Now when that's on as tight as it will go, place the LED, the cathode side, that's the short end, facing downwards. Really important that you get this right. Um, as I said before, the LED is one of the uh, polarized components, so it has to go in the right way. This is the DC power jack, and we are going to bolt this on to the top such that the short end, which is the ground, is facing the left, and the long end, the positive, 9 volt positive, is facing the right. Again, this is another thing that we have to make sure that we get right. And we're going to use, again, the 10 millimeter socket. Be careful because as you're sort of screwing this thing in, uh, the jack might slip on you and turn the other way. Okay, the potentiometer. Each potentiometer comes with this little nub here. You just take your pliers and break that off. Slot that end into the uh, topmost hole on the front. Hold it in place, washer and nut. And we're going to use the 3 8 inch socket to tighten this down. Okay, twist it into place if it has moved at all. Okay, now the input and output jacks. This is the output jack. Um, it doesn't matter which one, they're both the same. The little tongue thing that the, uh, the tip will connect to, uh, just make that go sort of towards the bottom or towards the front of the enclosure. We're going to use the half inch socket to tighten this up. Okay, the beautiful Gorva 3PDT foot switches next. Leave the, the bottom nut on as low as it will go and put this locking washer on. And then we're going to slide it onto the enclosure. Make sure the Gorva logo is facing upwards. And then put on the other washer and the nut.
and we're going to use the 9 16 inch socket to tighten this down. Before we begin soldering stuff in, I suggest popping in a little patch cable into the input and output jacks. That way you know no wires are going to pass through those areas. Let's start with W1. And we're going to solder W1 to the bottom two right and left terminals on the foot switch. W1 is the jumper wire between the input and output jacks when the foot switch is in bypass mode. So this is a top tip. You'll see me do this a lot. We're going to use that helping hands to hold the wire in place while we solder the first joint and then we're going to remove the helping hands and use our needle nose pliers to bend it into place uh, to solder the second joint. So here we go, bending it into place and then making our next solder joint. So now we're on to W2. We're going to solder this to the bottom middle terminal on the foot switch up to the top right. W2 is the jumper wire that will ground the output of the effect circuit when the foot switch is off. So this is W3. This is the wire that will connect our foot switch to the output jack. Our output jack is on the right here, by the way, and input jack on the left. Here you'll see me clip the excess wire. I've cut the wires longer than they need to be just to accommodate any uh, differences in how the holes are drilled or whatever. And now here is W4. This is our input wire. Okay, this is the first time that I uh, will need you to bend the wire and I've put that in the instructions. So just bend the left side forward like this. Once we solder this wire in, our bypass circuit is actually complete uh, and we can plug our guitar and amplifier in and our guitar signal will pass through it. The reason why the ground nodes don't need to be connected is because the enclosure is metal. So uh, everything that's touching the enclosure, including the grounding of our cables, is connected to the ground. This is W5, which is our ground node, speaking of ground. And we're going to bend this part here 90 degrees so that it looks like this, kind of like a staircase. When you're putting this wire in, and indeed all of the wires, you have to make sure that they're not touching any uh, terminals or any other wires or any metal parts that they're not supposed to be touching. So there's a small bend here towards the foot switch side of this wire that is kind of bent at a 45 degree angle roughly and that's to jump the gap um, on the left there that's so that it, it doesn't touch any of the left most terminals of the foot switch so definitely remember that the short terminal on the 9 volt power jack is the ground Here we have W6. This is the ground wire that will connect the uh, input jack, the ground of the input jack to the ground node. Soldering this might be a bit hard because uh, 
it's kind of floating there, but you can use helping hands if you need to. Okay, now we're going to bend the cathode, that's the short terminal of the LED, downwards so that it connects with the nearest um, terminal on the foot switch. Solder it into place. This is R6, a 1K resistor and just trim the the leads about halfway it doesn't have to be perfect i'm going to trim them more later using your helping hands grab one of the leads and put it in place onto the anode the long end of the led and solder that in place make sure it's far enough down around about where the ground node is and trim the excess leads. W7 is next. This is our 9 volt uh, power bus. Bend it again so that it's like a staircase, just like the ground bus. This part is going to be slightly out of sequence. I forgot to put the diode in, uh, but bend them both downwards and then clip most of the lead off. Yeah, ignore the transistor that's in the background there. Using your helping hands, put that in place. With the gray stripe that is on the diode facing right. At this point, the bypass circuit and the LED are complete, so we can test that out. Now that our bypass circuit is finished, we can start on the effect circuit. And we begin with W8. You're going to need to bend it in two places as shown in the instructions. This wire connects the top left terminal of the foot switch to the leftmost terminal of the potentiometer. And when you're putting this in, make sure it doesn't touch the tips of the jack or the tips of the, uh, the cables or the enclosure. and trim it. Up next we have R1 and what you're going to do is trim the leads about halfway. Like R6 it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and then you're going to bend both leads downwards. 
We're going to trim these again later. This is W9. It connects the rightmost terminal of the potentiometer to ground, so it kind of goes across diagonally. It's a good rule of thumb to um, attach the components and wires that are on the lower level, so to speak, first, and then work your way up. Okay, our first capacitor, C1, it's the one of the little ceramic capacitors. Just splay the legs out like that, and then give it one of the leads a little kink. These capacitors are not polarized, so uh, they can go in either direction. Solder that in and just let the capacitor just kind of hang there. Okay, now the most exciting part, the transistor. You're just going to take both uh, outer leads and grab them about halfway and bend them outwards, left and right. And then we're going to trim the, the lead on the right, that's the collector, about halfway between the kink and the end. We'll trim the emitter as well later. And now we have to solder the base onto the other end of C1. So while you're doing this, try to leave as much space around the transistor as you can because you're going to need that space. There's going to be a lot of resistors and a, a big old capacitor that goes in there too. So this is R4. Just bend one of the leads 90 degrees and then we're going to trim both leads about halfway. We're going to solder this to the collector and to the positive bus. R5 is exactly the same as R4. You tr bend it the same way and trim it the same way. And even solder it the same way, just on the other side. Um, try to push this resistor as far to the left as you can, like right up, uh, right up against the ground bus. You're going to need that space between the resistor R5 and the transistor. This is another spot where I made a mistake, so there's going to be some extra components in there. Just ignore them. The cathode of C2, we're going to bend it to the left. And the anode, we're going to bend it downwards and then trim them about halfway. Solder the cathode, that's the negative side, to the ground bus and the positive side, the anode, to the emitter. And you can see the mistake that I made by not doing this in the correct sequence because that resistor that's just below is kind of in the way.
Okay, R3 is nice and easy. We're going to just cut the leads in half. And then with the helping hands, grab one of the leads. And we're going to bridge the gap between the ground bus with it and the base. R2 is also easy, it's exactly the same as R3, except instead of going to the ground bus, we're going to the positive bus. So I'll make mention of this now in case you intend to uh, make your own circuits after this. Uh, we're not moving from left to right on the circuit diagram. We're soldering parts in, in a sequence that makes it more convenient to solder other components. So for example, we are soldering the transistor in first before we solder R2 and R3 because the transistor creates a structure for us to attach the other components to. Okay, this is C3, which believe it or not is the last component that we have to put in. We're gonna bend the leads the same way we did with, um, with C1. And we're just going to put a little kink in the end. The kinked lead is going to attach onto the, uh, the collector of the transistor. And we're just going to leave it hanging there. This is W10, it's a perfectly straight wire, and we're just going to go from the other end of the capacitor C3 over to the upper right hand terminal of the foot switch. One last wire, which is technically optional, um, would be W11. And that just spans between the ground of the uh, output jack to the ground bus. And that's it. We're finished. We just have to put the knob on, so aim it towards one of the moons. And tighten it down. Congratulations on making the Ostera Boost pedal. All that's left to do now is make some great music with it. Thank you so much for your support.